I'd love to see your envious face, but I'm not that cruel, so I'll let it be. It'd probably be awkward for you to see me, so why don't you hide in the bathroom or something? <laughs> she laughed noisily over the phone, mocking me. I detest this woman more than anyone in the world. No, in the universe. Thirteen years ago, she stole my husband from me. I'd like to cut ties, but that's definitely difficult to do. Because sadly, this woman is my biological sister. I held the phone to my ear after a while and let out a small chuckle after she hung up on me. My name is Ruth, a 37-year-old divorcee. My marriage fell apart in just six months, and it's all because of my villainous sister. I have an identical twin sister named Rachel. Even our longtime friends mistake us for each other because we look so much alike. However, contrary to our appearance, our personalities are completely different. I'm more of the quiet type, while Rachel is active and tends to take charge of things. I was the better one in academics, while Rachel excelled in sports. Rachel's the type who blurts out whatever she's thinking. How can you wear such unstylish clothes? People are going to think I'm not stylish either since we're twins. That'll suck. As you can see, we don't get along. It wouldn't be so bad if it was just at home, but Rachel always brought trouble. Back in our school days, I often got harassed by girls from other schools on my way home. Hey, stop hitting on my boyfriend! Of course, I didn't even know them. Ah, not again, Rachel. Whenever Rachel found someone she was interested in, she wouldn't hesitate to snatch him away, even if he already had a girlfriend. I blame the guys too, but Rachel was worse. And I, being mistaken for her, am a victim too. Moreover, she seems to lose interest once she gets the guy sometimes breaking up in as short as a week. It's unbelievable. Rachel, you need to stop this nonsense. Have you ever thought about how the other girls feel and that I'm also suffering too? To my words, she responded, An unattractive woman's jealousy is scary. <laughs> anyway, your guy, John, right? He's so dull. I doubt he'll cheat on you. <laughs> Don't worry. I have no interest in him. He's not hot at all. <laughs> and talked down on my boyfriend. This man named John is the despicable ex-husband who dumped me without a second thought 13 years ago. We got close because we went to the same tutoring center. He was rather quiet and made me feel at ease. His mother was a fortune teller and was well known for her accurate readings. She even ran a fortune telling house. We graduated from the same university and decided to get married two years later. I had thought I would spend my life with this man but six months after our marriage, my ex-husband, John, placed the divorce papers in front of me and said, Please divorce me, I can't take it anymore, and I'm sure you know why. Sitting next to him was my sister, Rachel, with a smug look on her face. Taken by surprise, I stammered, Huh? I'm sorry, I don't understand, did I do something? I don't remember doing anything wrong. At my words, John banged his fist on the desk and shouted, Really? How do you have the audacity? You've been cheating on me. Can you still deny it after seeing this? On the desk were a few pictures showing a man and a woman entering a hotel together. But to me, it looked like I was being shown pictures of my sister Rachel, going into a hotel with some man I didn't know. I didn't understand what my ex-husband was saying at all. The man in the photo must have been just another one of Rachel's flings. No, no, this is Rachel, it's not me. At that moment, Rachel burst into tears and sobbed. Ruth, let's stop this. I can't stand lying to John anymore. Then John said to my sister, Rachel, I'm okay. You're so kind. Thank you. What am I looking at here? John glared at me and started to spew a fabricated story that was simply unimaginable. According to him, I had been cheating and to avoid being caught, I was constantly borrowing clothes from my sister spending my spare time at a hotel with my lover, and that I was a terrible woman. John had completely believed this ridiculous story that he'd heard from my sister. I heard from Rachel that you've always had a bad track record with men. Even when we were dating, you were playing around with several men. I responded to my furious ex-husband. Are you seriously saying that, John? You've been with me for several years, and you believe a story from my sister, who you've only known for half a year? Are you sane? Are you an idiot? Perhaps he didn't like my calm response because all he could do was glare at me. And to my surprise, 
Rachel had the nerve to hit on John. You may have the same face, but your personalities are completely different. You're not charming at all. Rachel always listens to my complaints with a smile. She's so patient. I might have married the wrong sister. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Rachel continued to fake her tears, but I could see her grin. Rachel was always a player when it came to men, since she was a student, but ever since she started working, she had changed the type of men she targeted. She now prioritized social status and money over looks, and John, my ex-husband who worked at a major corporation and came from a moderately wealthy family, was a perfect target. She must have set her eyes on him from the time I introduced him at our wedding. My ex-husband had been completely fooled by my sister's poor acting. I never thought my ex-husband that I'd been with for so long could be this naive, and I could feel my feelings towards him fade away rapidly. You two are despicable. Do as you please, but never show your face in front of me again. I felt tears welling up, but I managed to hold them back. I filled out the divorce papers on the spot and threw them at the two of them. Knowing my cunning sister, she and John probably hadn't started a physical relationship yet. Blaming compensation seems tough. Still, if it meant those two would disappear from my life, I didn't care about the money anymore. When I returned to my parents' house after that, my parents were furious at my sister's behavior and disowned her. When asked about her reaction, she said, Oh, really? I don't care, but if you're having money trouble, don't come begging to me, okay? <laughs> Bye then. Making light of even her own parents. I found out from a friend that my ex-husband and my sister got married just three months later. I was so stunned I couldn't even cry. I felt nothing at all. For 13 years since then, I haven't seen my sister and her husband. But one day, I got a call from a public phone on my cell phone. I always answer calls for work, so I answered and heard, Uh, hello, Ruth? I immediately recognized the voice on the other end of the phone. I don't know how you have the nerve to call me, Rachel. At my words, Rachel chuckled and said, are you still holding a grudge? You're always so gloomy, Ruth. But whatever, I have a favor to ask. Without showing any remorse for what happened, my sister continued. I'm pregnant. Oh, of course, the father is John, who you loved so much, haha. <laughs> so I wanted to let my parents know about their first grandchild. They won't listen to me, so you tell them for me. She had the audacity to command me like that, so I retorted. What are you so cheery about when you've been disowned? But she just laughed it off. How many years do you think it's been? Thirteen years. I think you're the only one who still holds a grudge. You're probably still living alone at our parents' house, am I right? I'm saying that I'll be the one to give them a grandchild instead of you. She's always been the best at irritating people. I'd love to see your envious face, but I'll spare you because it's too pathetic. It'll be awkward when you see me, so why don't you hide in the bathroom or something, ha <laughs> ha? She said as she laughed out loud while I remained silent. Then she hung up abruptly after saying she would come over on the weekend. I kept the phone to my ear for a while after the call ended and chuckled. That weekend, when I was relaxing in the backyard, my phone rang. I glanced at the screen and saw a blocked number. It was probably my sister. I answered the phone, annoyed. Hey, unblock me already. I snapped back. What's wrong with blocking someone I don't want to receive calls from? That's what call blocking is for. Oh, maybe you don't understand because you're stupid. Ha <laughs> ha. I laughed sarcastically. I heard something break. Perhaps she was irritated. I've come all this way. Why is nobody home? I told you I'd come today, didn't I? Huh? You were serious? I thought you were joking. Besides, you hung up before I could tell you. I don't live there anymore. What? Judging by my younger sister's enraged and slightly shaky voice, it seems she was standing in front of the house we used to live in. However, none of us live there anymore. She was making so much noise and chaos that it seemed likely to cause a nuisance to the neighbors. So I gave her my current address and hung up the phone. After waiting for about an hour, the doorbell rang. There stood a sullen-faced Rachel and John, my ex-husband. The first thing she blurted out was, You've got some nerve, and what is this place? Why on earth would someone like you be living in such a nice apartment? She glared at me, her eyes bloodshot with anger. It's no surprise my sister was shocked. This place is relatively new and located in a good area. The rent isn't cheap either. While it may not be a luxury high-rise, it's a pretty decent property. Ignoring the worked-up Rachel, I told them, 
The neighbors won't like all this noise. Why don't you come inside? Upon showing her into the room, she seemed taken aback by its size. Seeing her frustrated face, I couldn't help but smirk. Our mother, who I live with, was sitting on the couch, silently observing my sister. Well, you said you had something to discuss. I don't mind at all, but if I'm in the way, should I hide in the bathroom or something? I remarked sarcastically. Never mind, I'm good. Rachel snapped back at me. Rachel moved closer to her mother and nervously said, Hi, Mom. Long time no see. I'm pregnant. That's why today we wanted to discuss if it's possible for John and I to stay here for a while. At my sister's audacious request, I nearly burst into laughter, blurting out, Wait, you want me to live with you guys? No way. Have you forgotten what you did to me in the past? Absolutely not. Cutting me off, Rachel said, Ruth, just shut up. This house is still under Dad's name, right? You can't even get remarried and you're still leeching off our parents. How pathetic for a single woman like you. <laughs> then Rachel added, Great job taking care of our folks. From now on, John and I will live here and take care of them, so can you leave? Oh, and where's Dad? Is he at work? After seeing my sister speaking with a smug grin, I had reached my limit. However, it was our mother who spoke up first, after listening to her quietly. Dad's gone. He passed away. Mom only muttered those few words. My parents were very serious people and had always apologized to me about my divorce 13 years ago, despite it all being Rachel's fault. My father especially used to say, I should have. Maybe it was my fault for not raising her better. I'm sorry, Ruth. I'm really sorry. He became increasingly depressed to the point where he found it hard to continue working. At that time, both of my parents were in their early 50s and we were surviving on my income and mom's part-time job. A while later, my father was diagnosed with cancer and passed away 10 years ago. Just before he died, he said, Don't tell Rachel anything. I don't think I'll make it to heaven if she comes to my funeral. Just as he said, mom and I didn't contact my sister, Rachel. We moved into this house about five years ago. It was because mom had injured her leg due to overworking. We considered renovating our old house, but it was built at the top of a hill, and we thought it would be too hard for Mom to walk up the hill. Since we started living in this accessible home, Mom said her legs have been feeling much better. I tried to speak calmly, but the thought of the late dad made me want to burst out crying. It must have been the same for Mom, as there were tears in her eyes. However, Rachel's reaction to my words was, in a sense, predictable. Too little, too late. Besides, it's not my fault Dad got sick. In fact, you're living in such a nice place now because of Dad's inheritance, right? That's not fair. What about my share? Didn't I have the right to inherit? She blurted out such nonsense. Without missing a beat, Mom shot back. Inheritance? There's no such thing. You only came to us when you were in trouble for doing stupid things before your marriage. How many times do you think we paid alimony because you messed around with a married man? Live with you? Never. You must be joking. Don't be ridiculous. It was the first time both Rachel and I had seen Mom so enraged. Sensing the tension, Rachel fell silent. Then, John, who had been quiet like a puppet until now, said, Rachel, you've been deceiving me, haven't you? Ever since I married you, my life's been a mess. You're a reckless spender. You don't do any housework. I had the opportunity to meet some guys who graduated from the same high school as you, and they all said I was blind to marry you. I nearly burst out laughing at my ex-husband's words. He's quite something to have put up with her for 13 years. Moreover, when he approached me, he said, Ruth, I've been regretting our divorce. Do you want to start over here? Let's let bygones be bygones. When he tried to touch me softly, I felt a chill run down my spine. No way, please. <laughs> let bygones be bygones? Who does he think he is? <laughs> is he stupid? <laughs> it's not his place to say that. Just as I was about to dodge him, the door to the next room burst open. Could you not touch her with your dirty hands, please? A man suddenly appeared, and both were taken aback. Ignoring Rachel, who murmured, Who is he? I said, I told you to stay hidden because I didn't want to involve you. At my words, he replied, I couldn't stand it when he tried to touch you, Ruth. Besides, I think having a third party will help the discussion, don't you think? Okay. Okay. This is my husband, Alex, and... Tony, come here. This is our son, Tony. He's eight years old. I called out to our son, Tony, who was peeping out from behind the door. 
Perhaps he had heard some of the argument. He was glaring at Rachel and her husband. Huh? You're remarried? Unbelievable. Why? My sister, Rachel, was more surprised than anyone that I had a husband and a son. My ex-husband, John, was just as shocked, gaping like a fish out of water. What do you mean, why? How many years do you think it's been? It's been 13 years. 13 years. Despite all that time passing, you guys haven't changed one bit, which is surprising. Well, you do look like you've aged quite a bit, though. At my somewhat sarcastic words, their faces turned bright red. I met my current husband, Alex, shortly after my father passed away. We were colleagues for a while, and one day he asked me out. When I rejected him saying that I was a divorcee, he responded, Does being divorced mean you can't remarry? And asked me out once more. We got married a year later, and our son Tony was born the following year. Alex treats my mother very well, doesn't mind us all living together, and my in-laws, who already live with Alex's brother and his wife, have reassured me. We're glad you're here for Alex. The one who proposed moving to our current house was Alex, who was concerned about my mother's mobility. I turned to the two shocked individuals. My mother and I are living our lives here. Can you not disrupt? And Rachel, you said you were pregnant. How many months along are you? From their flustered responses to my question, I gathered that Rachel was probably lying about being pregnant. I was only married to John for six months, and I never got pregnant. That was the reason my former mother-in-law used to make snide comments. But if Rachel isn't pregnant, it means that's probably the case. Rachel seems to get along with the bad-natured mother-in-law. Unable to stand the harsh glares from my family, the two hastily left our house. I mean, I had heard stories, but is she really your sister? She does look like you, but her character... Anyway, it's settled for now. Alex said with a smile, to which I gave a bitter smile. Hmm, really? That evening, the doorbell rang continuously. Looking at the monitor, I sighed. Huh, <sighs> they came after all. When I opened the door, there stood Rachel and John with pale faces. We, we need help. Can you lend us some money? As they knelt down begging, my husband looked puzzled, but my mother and I felt differently. During the day, while waiting for a call from Rachel, Mom received a call from a certain individual. It was a friend of my deceased father, who currently rents our old home. Him and his family are living there right now. When I came back to the house, I found the flower beds in the garden ravaged and the windows cracked. The security footage clearly showed a man and a woman with the infuriated woman stomping on the flower beds and hurling stones at the window. Of course, it was my enraged sister Rachel on a phone call with me. When mom gave Rachel's contact info to dad's friend, she was furious to learn that this was the daughter who had tormented our dear father for years. It seems that in the damaged garden, there were rare flowers that were difficult to grow, and they'd ask for compensation. They seemed to be struggling financially, to the point of having difficulty with housing, so I expected them to turn up again, but I never thought they'd showed up that very day. I must admit, I was impressed by their audacity. I can give you some money, but there's one condition, I said. As I watched them trudge home with slumped shoulders, I couldn't help but laugh and think, serves you right. In their hand was a written pledge I had just made them sign. I had made them write in the pledge that they would never approach me again in return for me taking responsibility for this incident. But Rachel is still my sister by blood. It's hard to completely cut ties with her. There may come a time when she'll use the power of the authorities to approach me. When that time comes, I'm prepared to fight, using the audio recordings I secretly made 13 years ago, and this time as evidence. Because you see, I have no intention of forgiving my sister and her husband any time at all. Later, a friend told me that my ex-husband had immediately resigned from the big corporation after our divorce and started working as a staff member in a fortune-telling establishment run by my former mother-in-law. Because they were family, he was paid a high salary and he and my sister seemed to have been living a life of luxury. However, a few months ago, my former mother-in-law suddenly passed away from illness, and my ex-husband, who had no talent for fortune-telling, took over as her successor, but the establishment quickly closed down. In their desperation, the couple claimed, This is a bracelet that our late mother lovingly made. They targeted the people who had faith in my former mother-in-law. However, a whistleblower exposed their lies, and the victims formed a group. 
The victims began flocking to the establishment every day and my sister, who no longer had a place to live and work, came to ask for my help. I was so irritated by their audacity. However, seeing that the police have started moving, it's probably only a matter of time before the two of them are held accountable for their crimes. After that, we moved again. The reason was my husband Alex's job transfer. Can, can I really come along? Mom asked apologetically, to which Alex, my husband, responded with a chuckle. What are you talking about? You're an important part of our family, mother. Even if you resist, I'll carry you over my shoulder and take you along, okay? <laughs> Upon hearing Alex's lighthearted joke, Mom let out tears of gratitude. Grandma, you're crying again. Here, have a Kleenex. Observing his emotional grandmother, Tony was concerned but still smiled. And as I watched my family, I felt a wave of gratitude for the happiness I felt. Why don't we go to my parents' house for New Year's? My husband's words were the catalyst for everything. It was also the start of the end. Susan is my name. I am a 35-year-old housewife. My husband Ben and I had the same job and got married. I left the company right after giving birth to our beloved daughter, Emily. I visited my husband's parents for the first time when she was six years old. Hey, isn't dinner ready yet? My mother-in-law's voice echoes. Mother, yes, almost. I respond while busily working. My mother-in-law lets out a long sigh. You're a complete slacker. How can you put up with a wife like this, Ben? Yeah, other people's wives are more quick with everything, but absolutely not her. What? I thought. Oh my goodness, you're just sitting there watching TV. Right before I opened my mouth to say it to my husband, I heard my mother-in-law's words. After breakfast, clean up the yard, then clean up the closet, and then the storage outside. It was supposed to be New Year's Day. New Year's is supposed to be the most relaxing day of the year. But why am I busily working like this? My husband doing nothing irritates me so much. I was too worn out to move by the time I finished all the tasks I was told to do. I took a seat in the living room, exhausted. Who said you can take a break? Make lunch already. My mother-in-law commanded me without hesitation. I've been working all day, I said, and I just needed a break. A wife should be working like a servant. You want to eat for free without having to work? Work. What? My husband lives in the countryside. For better or worse, old customs still exist there. A wife is the one who enters the family. The old way of thinking persists. But no wife was ever made to work like a servant. Hey, can you help me a little? No way. My husband responded with a sarcastic tone. At home, my husband does nothing. He does even less at my in-laws, drinking all day. And my husband hasn't moved at all since this morning. Hey, I'm going grocery shopping. Yeah, then go. Hey help. Supermarkets in the countryside are very far. My husband, who has a driver's license, has been drinking since this morning. Well, I do not have a license, so I had no choice but to walk. It is 30 minutes one way. He frowned when I asked him to at least carry a few things. Nah, I don't want to. Quick, cold response again. Do you want me to throw mochi in your face? I wanted to say. Ha, huh, I'm sure it would be difficult to remove. I see him in front of me as I imagine things like that, while my husband just shows off his beer can. I just had a drink. What's the deal with the robot talk? I am drunk. So what? So I can't go. Ha, huh, you just don't want to go. I see, you useless jerk. 
my mother-in-law yelled at me angrily from behind. Is the meal ready yet? Oh, God. I'm so going to get tons of mochi. I'm finally back. The 60-minute walk was extremely hard, and I was carrying bags in both hands on the way back. I felt dizzy when I arrived at my in-law's house. I put the bags down and sat down at the front door. I let out a sigh. Then I heard this. Hurry up, you are slow with everything, just like your mother. I'm sorry. I just heard my mother-in-law yell and my daughter apologize. And at this moment, I was the robot that had just used up all of its energy, but now found energy to spare. As if I had forgotten how tired I was, I jumped to my feet and dashed in the direction of the voice. I stomped into the kitchen, stepping on my husband who was still on the floor doing nothing. I heard him groan but didn't care. And this is what I saw. What are you doing? My mother-in-law and daughter both looked at me as I yelled, Mom! Oh, you're finally home. My daughter's face lit up when she saw me. I could see tears in her eyes. My mother-in-law sat down like she didn't care. What are you doing? I demanded of my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law sneered at my question. My daughter was holding the rice cooker's inner pot in her hand. Why is she holding that? What are you doing, Emily? My daughter explained uncomfortably. Well, Grandma told me to get ready because she was hungry. First, she told me to cook rice. I washed the rice and... Ha, she can't even cook rice. Such a useless granddaughter. What are you teaching her? She is just like you. I wonder if she really is my son's daughter. Of course, I could no longer control my anger when she talked about my daughter. She's only six years old. I can't believe you're asking her to do that. Of course she knows how to do it, but can't you just do it yourself? How dare you do that to your own grandchild? My mother-in-law's face turned bright red and her voice squeaked. What are you saying? You want to put this old woman to work? What a horrible woman. Look, a wife is a servant, and she's supposed to shut up and work, and the daughter of a servant is also a servant. A servant? Who do you owe your living to? You live off my son's hard work. You are supposed to respect my son and me. Stop complaining and get to work, servant. Yelling, my mother-in-law left the kitchen. She was so fierce that I could not say anything back to her. I didn't have a word to say. I was speechless at how stupid she sounded. Then I heard her and my husband talking. Your wife is useless. She's no better than a servant. Well, when my daughter grows up, she'll be of some use to you. Just have a little more patience. You're having a hard time too at home, right? You can come back if you want. Divorce? That's fine, but I need a servant. Hey, why don't we live together? I'm sick of my current job, too. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to let her do the work and I can relax and live in the countryside. What did my husband just say? I was horrified by his comment. Oh, that's a good idea. My mother-in-law agreed, and I was just out of my mind. I clenched my fists, but noticed they were quickly covered with warm hands, and I realized, Mom? It was my daughter. I slowly looked at her. She looked up at me, with a worried face. I crouched down, meeting her eyes, and slowly spoke to her. Hey, Emily, what mommy? Do you like daddy? Hmm... Okay, she can't give me an immediate answer. Of course she can't. My husband is indifferent to her growing up. When he comes home from work, he doesn't even talk to my daughter. He sits on the couch and watches TV or he's on his phone. On weekends, he goes out drinking and comes home late. After COVID, he drinks a lot at home. 
The hangover the next day is a regular occurrence. On holidays, he either stays home doing nothing or goes out with friends. Very few times we went out as a family. I mean, when was the last time we went out together? This family trip to the in-laws is the first trip we had together in years. I am sure my husband doesn't even know which class my daughter is in, in kindergarten. He doesn't know what she likes and what she doesn't like. He is not interested in what my daughter wants to be in the future. He probably doesn't even know that she'll be in elementary school next year. She can't say she loves her father. Of course she can't. I asked her again, Well then, do you like your grandmother? No. Well, this time it was an immediate answer. I laughed. I thought to myself, well, yeah, if she yells at her like that. Then she said something unexpected. Because she bullies you, Mom. It's New Year's Day and you haven't had a chance to relax at all. She's always telling you to do this and that. Grandma is so cruel. Wow, children are watching things. Well, I guess they can tell when I'm always being ordered around like that. Smiling, I asked her the important thing. Emily, do you want to live with your grandmother? She shook her head. Do you want your father? No. That was a wonderful, immediate answer. And I decided, the next day. I went out with my daughter in the morning. By the time we got back to my in-law's house, it was dark outside. When I entered the house, my mother-in-law and husband were waiting for me, looking annoyed. They said, You're finally home? What have you been up to? Yeah, some stuff. I avoided my husband's question. Seeing me like that, my mother-in-law said to me, Ha, young wives these days. I'm hungry, servant. Where's my food and tea? My mother-in-law acting like commander-in-chief. I silently served them both tea. My husband tried to pick up the teacup, but I quickly snatched it away from him. What? What the hell? My husband was shocked. Then I poured the tea on his head. Whoa, what are you doing? Don't worry, it's already cooled down. That's not the point. Hey, what the heck? Stop! Avoiding my husband's reach, I put the cup down. What the hell are you doing? You are a servant. My mother-in-law had a furious expression. Shut up. I'm not your servant. I yelled back angrily. My mother-in-law tried to stand up and yell at me. I interrupted her. What? A son's wife is not a servant. I'll tell you if you didn't know. I am not a servant. My mother-in-law was unable to say anything back to me, so I continued. She was so shocked she couldn't get a word out of her mouth. I glared at her, and then I moved my face closer to her. Ah! My mother-in-law screamed. I moved my face closer to her. I didn't care. The distance between us was ten centimeters. Listen to me. There is no system in the world that allows you to use a wife as much as you want. I will protect my family, but I will not be your servant. What? I am your husband's mother. I am your family, so protect me and do as I tell you. Are you crazy? If I was a real servant, I wouldn't be your family. How are you my family when you're just commanding? I calmly replied to my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law's face, which had been pale blue earlier, was now bright red. How dare you talk to me like that? You were talking to me like that too. Why can't I just talk like that to you? I am your mother. Ha! Huh, stop saying stupid things. I had been holding back. I had been holding back so much until now. But I couldn't do it anymore. There is a limit to everything and the attitude of my mother-in-law and husband finally broke down my wall of patience. And what? What do you think your grandchild is, a servant? You treat your grandchild as a servant? Stop messing around with me. 
I moved my face even closer to hers, and her face turned blue again. It was like a traffic light. What a weak woman you are. She had been so bossy, but just one little counterattack makes her like this? So surprised by her weakness, I scoffed and turned away from her. My mother-in-law, still with a blue face, was shaking a little. I turned my attention to the other person. Now you. Y yes? So shameful how he answers like this. I glared at him. What have you been doing while our daughter was being treated like a servant? I, I was on my phone. And? Was drinking beer? Drinking beer while your daughter and wife were treated like servants. What a great life you have. I'm sorry. You think you just have to apologize? Ah! I yelled at him with a devilish look on my face, and he screamed pitifully. He ran away and hid behind his mother. What are you doing? My head began to ache. Forget it. Just fill this out. What is this? My husband, who had been hiding behind his mother, slowly came out. It was like a turtle and a baby turtle. When he noticed what the paper in my hand was, his face immediately went blank. Divorce papers? What? We are divorcing, so I'll never come here again. At my words, my mother-in-law said, What? My husband also said, What? His mouth dropping open. I shook the paper in front of them. My part is already filled out. I'll submit it to the government office after the New Year's break, so get to it. That paper is a fake. How can you get it when the government office is closed? Well, I'm sorry, you can get divorce papers even on holidays. And you can even download them online. If I want, I can bring it to the office today and they will accept it. When I said this and pushed the divorce papers at him, he shook his head, half crying. No, I don't want this. I don't want a divorce. You don't want me to leave you, huh? No. You'd be glad to have me around to do everything for you? Yes. You don't want a divorce because you're comfortable with me as your servant? Yes. Uh, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. Ha, see? Uh, no! Is this deja vu? I think my husband screamed like that when I yelled several minutes ago. Oh well. If he's not writing it down, I'll have to ask an expert to do it for me. I'm getting a divorce, even if you don't sign it. I've already spoken to my parents. Emily. Yes, Mom. Are you ready? Yes, I've packed all my things. As if to answer my call, my daughter came out. She held up her bag in her hand. Hey, are you going somewhere? I looked back at my husband, holding up my own bag, too. Good question. We're going back to my parents' house now. Huh? You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding me. No, I'm not. This was not a joke? You treating us like servants? We can discuss this through our lawyer. Goodbye. I said what I was going to say. I took my luggage and headed for the front door with Emily. My husband immediately chased after us. Wait a minute. You can't live without me. Hearing those words, I stopped. I turned around slowly, and my husband also stopped. I stared at him. Did you forget? I asked. What do you mean? I used to have a better career than you, and I used to make more money than you. I quit my job when I got pregnant, but even then, I was making more money than you are now. My words made my husband pale. He had been working at the same place, but had he forgotten about it? Very convenient memory. I know I have a blank slate, but I will start working little by little. My parents are willing to help me. We are going to stay at my parents' house for a while. I will go back to work little by little. Even if I don't make as much money as I used to, I'll probably manage. 
No, I'll make it work. Seeing how determined I was, my husband was already half crying. I'm sorry, I can change. Please don't divorce me. You had so many chances to change your mind, but you were the one who threw them away. It's too late for regrets. Saying this, I put my hand on the front door. Then, wait, my mother-in-law, who had remained silent until then, called out to me. What is it? I turned around, annoyed, and saw my mother-in-law there with a troubled look on her face. My mother-in-law exclaimed, What happens to my meals? I don't care, I yelled, and we left my in-law's house. Then my daughter and I went to my parents' house. My parents welcomed us with smiles. Well, well, well. Rough start to the new year. My mother urged us to warm up by the heater. My daughter was relieved and started peeling tangerines. Yes, sitting by the heater and eating tangerines for the new year. It was such a hectic New Year's. I hope we can spend a relaxing time next year. I promised myself that I would go to the shrine tomorrow to make that wish. After that, my husband kept insisting that he did not want a divorce. The discussion was difficult. But in the end, we managed to reach an agreement, taking into consideration the fact that our daughter was refusing to stay with her father. Of course, child support was paid all at once. There was no way I could trust that man. As a result, the apartment where we originally lived was sold, and Ben, who became my ex-husband, returned to his parents' home. My mother, she doesn't do anything, or rather, she's getting worse than before. One day, my ex-husband called me and whined. He told me that a neighbor had seen me working like a servant, and the fact that we were getting divorced was also known early on through the information network unique to the countryside. As a result, my ex-mother-in-law is being looked at with white eyes by the neighbors. Yeah, of course she is. No matter how rural the area, treating a wife like a servant is wrong. My ex-mother-in-law, who has been staying home because of this, has become extremely violent. She has been using her son as if he were a servant. He was standing up to her, which was leading them to an argument. He was complaining on the phone. I don't care about those things. I was going to hang up after telling him I had received the child support payment. You got what you deserved, I said coldly. I could imagine my husband half crying on the other end of the phone. Please, can't you help me just a little? I'm Emily's father, and my mother is her grandmother. I smiled at his words, though he couldn't see me, and said, I just had a drink. Why are you talking like that? I am drunk. Hey, I can't go. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why would I go help? I shouted and hung up the phone. I blocked his number. Good fortune comes to those who laugh. For a while after that, I couldn't stop laughing. One day, I came home and found that my husband had disappeared and left without a trace. A few days later, I found out that him and my sister had eloped. That was 12 years ago. He recently contacted me on the phone, stating, I'm coming to my home with my wife, and you are in my way. Get out of my parents' house. He was annoyed that I was living at his parents' house. It's been 12 years since they eloped, and I guess he intends to take my sister as his wife now that things have cooled down. But they don't know. They don't know how drastically the family, including myself, have changed since then. My name is Melanie Miller, and I am 27 years old. I studied and majored in web design and started to work in a web production company. That's where I met my husband, Shane. Shane works in the sales department for the company and is friendly by nature. 
His charm swept me in and we got married shortly after a year of dating. Once I was a part of the family, we decided to live together in his parents' home. By then, I quit my job at the web production company and started work as a freelance web designer. I decided to work from home so that I could keep up with my household and support my husband's lifestyle. At first, I had some trouble finding work, so my income was not stable. Now, however, I have no trouble finding work and maintaining a stable income. I could work at my own pace and put my family first. I could spend quality time with my husband and his family during the mornings, evenings, and even before bedtime. I was so satisfied with life. However, I noticed that my husband started to change his friendly attitude, little by little. It all started when I started to make twice the amount of money compared to what I was making two months prior at my old job. I was ecstatic to have reached and surpassed my salary that entire day. I couldn't wait to tell my husband when he came home from work. He's going to be so happy for me, I thought to myself. As soon as I knew he was home, I ran up to the front door with a huge grin on my face. Shane, guess what? My income last month was twice the amount that I would have made at my last job. What? Are you serious? Your last job had great benefits and pay, right? Yeah, but I've been wanting more. I finally did it. Yeah. Yep. That's it? What? You want me to throw you a party? My husband was being unusually sarcastic and negative. I didn't know where the attitude was coming from, so I asked. Shane, are you mad at me for something? Did I do something wrong? I genuinely thought that you'd be happy for me. Why would I be happy? It's not like my salary went up. Well, yeah, but can't you just be happy for your wife? Really? I'm not like you. I'm just not a naturally happy person. Shane? After that fight, my husband became more distant and indifferent day by day. Our daily conversations decreased, until eventually, it was only me that greeted him good morning and good night first. Even though we were only a year into marriage, we were far from happily married. My in-laws, whom we lived with, started to notice the tension and they began to worry, but they never said anything. Two months went by and the relationship was still the same. We ate our meals together, but sat in silence. He'd switch the channel when I was in the middle of watching something and would eat all of the food in the house that I'd buy without asking for permission. Whenever I tried to confront him, he'd argue with me, so I just kept it to myself. Then finally, one day, I was cleaning the house, and my mother-in-law came up to me looking anxious. Melanie, how are you? Are you okay? What do you mean, am I okay? Well, when you and Shane first got married, you both used to go out and enjoy spending time together. But lately, it seems like you don't do much of that anymore. And you don't even talk, and... Yeah, but we've only been married for a year, I replied. But it was strange. I forced a smile back at her so that she knew not to worry. But she saw right through my smile. She looked at me with a straight face. If you don't want to talk about it, I won't make you. But I worry about you, and lately, I feel like you've been down. Well, I'm not faking anything. Well, your father notices it too. Him and I are just worried that you might be overwhelming yourself. Oh, mother. Honestly, it probably was my fault that my husband was uncomfortable with me earning more. But on the other hand, I also felt alone in my accomplishment. And in the moment... I was so happy that she finally acknowledged and noticed the pain I was in. It brought tears to my eyes. So I decided to tell her everything. After listening to what I had to say, she started to rub my back and responded. I am so sorry on behalf of him. He is not man enough to sincerely be happy for you and your success. No, it's my fault. It was selfish of me to think that he would have genuinely been happy for me. But that's something you shouldn't have to worry about in a marriage, Melanie. And if you keep your feelings in about this, it will only make it worse. I don't think it could get any worse. Okay, so the two of you need to seriously talk about this. Can you do that? Yes, I can. 
Thank you for listening to me, Mom. She smiled back at me. Of course. And then she patted my head. My in-laws love me as if I were their own daughter. They saved me. With her advice in mind, I decided to have a proper conversation with my husband. That night, I stayed up waiting for my husband to come home. However, there was no sign of his return no matter how many hours went by. Normally, he'd be home by 10 at the latest, but it was already past 11 that night. What's taking you so long? Question mark. I texted him, but he didn't reply. Maybe something's wrong. I attempted to call him, but the phone would only ring and he didn't pick up. So I kept anxiously waiting. About half past midnight, he finally came home. Welcome home, I said, but he sighed loudly and looked at me annoyed. What are you doing? Why are you up this late? Well, I wanted to have a serious conversation with you today. About what? He answered annoyingly. This all started between us because of my new salary, right? I mean, I probably should have kept that to myself. I'm sure it hurt your ego. As soon as I said that, a chill ran through me. There he was, in front of me, with a cold look on his face. I was frozen in fear. He replied hatefully, there's nothing to talk about, and it's pathetic that you're waiting up for me to come home. I'm trying to have a better relationship with you, Shane. That's the problem, clearly. I made a mistake in finding the right partner. No. I'm tired from working overtime. You don't get to talk because all you do is sit around at home all day. My husband stormed past me and went upstairs to the room. I couldn't get myself to move until I was sure he was fully upstairs. Why was he even talking to me like that? I just want to live a normal, married life. My mother-in-law had given me the push that I needed, but nothing had been resolved. Regardless, I don't want to push another conversation with him after that attitude. I felt like he completely invalidated me as a person, so my heart grew bitter. Two more months went by, and we didn't talk. The days were long, and they passed by in a daze. That was when I came home one day and found that my husband was gone. I looked in his room and had a weird feeling. I thought, what? Shane's room is never clean. Shane is not a clean and tidy person, to say the least, but his room was surprisingly clean. The clothes in his closet and his suitcase were gone. I finally realized that he moved out of the house. I rushed to call my in-laws, but their phone was either turned off or disconnected. My sister Mimi then called me while I was still panicking. Hi, sis. Long time no see. Mimi, I can't talk right now. Your husband isn't there, is he? What? How did you know that? How did she know that? Something's not right here. And she proceeded to tell me the truth. I'm with your husband right now. What? What do you mean? Well, I was just at the bar, and I saw him there, coincidentally. We had a drink, and then he said you guys weren't really getting along. Mimi, no! You can't be. I am dating him, and we're going away to get married, so don't try and stop me. Going away? Don't be silly. Bring Shane back home now. I'm sorry, I can't. I've actually had these feelings for a while now. Plus, he's tall and handsome. I'll take him. Then, the phone went silent. I tried to call her back so many times, but she never answered. Instead, she sent me pictures. There were dozens of photos of them together, going on dates, smiling. Either way, it was not something I enjoyed looking at. A few days later, I received his signed and completed divorce papers. I called his job, but they told me he'd already resigned. I knew that I didn't deserve to go through this alone. I told my parents and in-laws about the situation and asked for their support. So, apparently, Shane and Mimi are together now. He quit the company on his own, and now he's making me sign the divorce papers. Everyone was speechless. Then, my father-in-law started to speak after processing. Melanie... I am truly sorry for our stupid son. I don't expect you to forgive me, 
Matter of fact, you don't have to. Oh, father. And unfortunately, I cannot forgive your sister either. You are like a daughter to me. I cannot forgive them for hurting my precious daughter. Everyone agreed with him in this. It was at that moment when all of us completely changed how we felt and thought about Shane and Mimi. My in-laws were considering moving into a new house at the time. After the situation, they claimed, I don't want anything to do with my son ever again, and they moved houses without telling him. My parents have also decided to cut ties with my sister. If she were to ever come back, they said they'd pretend as if they don't know her. Someone whose moral compass is so far gone that they'd take their sister's husband is no daughter of ours. That was their reasoning. So then, I decided to take this opportunity to go back home to my parents. I demanded alimony from them in exchange for going through with the divorce. Which he responded, You get the alimony when I get my divorce. But I eventually received several million yen in alimony with a message that followed, Divorce me. As soon as the divorce was finalized, I cut all ties with Shane and Mimi. It's been 12 years since the divorce, and a lot has happened since then. My in-laws tore down the house we all lived in and even sold the land. I have become more well-known as a web designer, and my salary is much higher than it used to be. Because of this, I'm able to travel regularly with my parents and live a fulfilling life. Today, while I was working, I received a call. I picked up without looking at the caller ID, assuming it was a client. But it instantly brought back bad feelings. It's been a long time, Melanie. How have you been? Shane? I knew you'd remember your ex-husband's voice. He's talking nonsense, just like before. What do you want? Twelve years and now you want to talk? I could hear him chuckle. No, you're in my house. Get out within the next ten minutes. What? What are you talking about? We're in some financial trouble. Anyway, I'm on my way there now. I'm bringing my wife home to my house. You can get out of my parents' house now. Apparently, he still thinks I'm living with his parents. He really thinks that after 12 years, things have cooled down and they'll finally be accepted. In the background, I hear, That's right! Get out of there! Coming from my sister. But they really don't know. Do they really think that just because it's been 12 years, all is forgiven? The world is not that kind, and I will show them hell if I have to. But I took a deep breath and said, If you want to go home, go home. I'm not at your parents' house anymore. Oh, really? Did my dad kick you out? How dumb can you be? Your parents' house doesn't even exist anymore. Huh? What do you mean it doesn't exist anymore? Shane's voice started trembling with anxiety. At that exact moment, he pulled up to where the house used to be. He screamed, What the hell? And I could hear the anguish in his voice. I then continued, As soon as you eloped, we decided to cut ties with you both. Your parents have moved out, and my parents completely disowned the woman you're with. There's nowhere for you to come back to. Are you kidding me? How is this even possible? Believe it or don't. Be my guest. Your parents, my parents, and I don't consider you family. You aren't worthy enough since you both ruin people's lives. That... That's... That's terrible. But family. And who ruined your family? Don't ever call me again. I won't let you people ruin my life any more than you already have. As soon as I said that, I hung up and blocked the number. This time, I severed the last connection. After their failed trip to his parents' home, they decided to try my parents. But my parents already disowned her. My sister is sobbing loudly, to which my parents responded, Who are you? And completely ignored them at the gate. Then, they both got down on their knees and started to plead. Please, parents, please forgive us. We have nowhere to go. Please. Shane was following along with Mimi. I'm begging you as well. My parents' house is gone. We have nowhere to go. Shut up. We don't care. You're not family anymore. That's right. He even sprinkled salt on the front door. No, please. Wait. No, please. I'm begging you. My father-in-law. You don't get to call me that. Get out of here. 
They were so persistent that my father ended up sprinkling salt on them and my mother called the cops for trespassing. They have not been seen since. Last I heard, they were jobless, homeless, and asking their friends for money. But by the time they came back, word of them had spread around and no one was willing to lend them anything. Anyway, it's unlikely that they could even survive in their hometown. They'd have to start scratch from somewhere else. But they brought that on themselves. They sowed their seeds, and they'll have to suffer for it. Me and my parents, of course, will never see them again. And they will live the rest of their lives full of regret. My name is Michael. I met my wife Amanda through a friend's introduction. She was cheerful and sociable, and we immediately hit it off when we first met. As we went out for meals a few times, I started to have feelings for Amanda and began dating her. After dating for about two years, we both started thinking about marriage, began living together, and registered our marriage the following year. We had a grand wedding, thinking it's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Our mutual friends performed some entertaining acts, making the ceremony memorable. Married life was pure happiness. We both worked, but Amanda's job did require much overtime, so she always came home first and prepared dinner for us. Michael, welcome home. Today's dinner is pork cutlet. Knowing that I loved meat, Amanda cooked meat dishes three times a week, considering a balanced diet. All of Amanda's homemade meals were delicious, and I truly felt lucky to have her as my wife. That is, until that time. It happened one day, almost three years into our marriage. I started to notice that something was off with Amanda. She no longer cooked dinner and waited for me. And she often went out after work, leaving me alone at home. Previously, even when I came home late from work, there would be a homemade meal on the table but now it was mostly frozen food or supermarket dishes, which made me feel somewhat lonely. However, Amanda also worked, and I was busy at work, making it hard for us to spend time together. I told myself that she probably wanted her own time while I was working overtime, and I didn't consider her feelings enough. This went on for about two months, and I finally decided that I needed to change something. As my work had calmed down, I took some paid leave and planned to go to a hot spring with Amanda. When I came home, Amanda was lying on the sofa, reading a fashion magazine. I hadn't heard her say welcome home recently. Amanda, I took some time off work, the week after next. How about we go to a hot spring and relax together? Without taking her eyes off of the magazine, Amanda replied, No, I don't feel like it. I couldn't understand her response, and was momentarily at a loss for words because I had researched various accommodations and nearby restaurants planning to present her with a travel plan. Hey, I've been so busy lately that I couldn't pay attention to you, right? I thought you might be lonely without me, so I wanted us to go to the hot spring together and spend some quality time together. I thought Amanda would also be unhappy with our current situation. I wanted to create some time for us and rebuild our good relationship. However, Amanda's response didn't change. It's totally fine the way it is now. Even if you're not around, I have things to do. Don't worry about it. In the end, her gaze remained fixed on the magazine. I couldn't figure out why Amanda would act this way. And I went to sleep that night with a heavy heart. I didn't sleep well, and the next morning I left the house with an awkward atmosphere between us. But since I couldn't focus on work, I decided to consult a co-worker during lunch break. Hey, can I talk to you for a bit? It's not really a fight, but I had this thing with my wife yesterday. Could she be cheating on you? I mean, you don't have any other clear reasons, right? I can't think of any other reason for her to suddenly become so cold. Cheating. The word echoed heavily in my mind. I never thought that this could happen to Amanda. But once a third party said that she was cheating, my suspicion grew and my health started to deteriorate. That day, I couldn't focus on my work and decided to leave early. When I got home, I went straight to the bedroom, took off only my suit jacket, 
without changing into my home clothes, and collapsed onto the bed. There was still some time before Amanda would come home. I decided to sleep until then, and felt a little more at ease in the cool, dimly lit room with my eyes closed. Because I hadn't slept well the night before, I quickly became drowsy and was almost half asleep. When I heard the front door close, and the sound of a woman's laughter, and multiple people entering the house. I woke up and listened carefully to the noises. I could tell the voice was Amanda's. At first, I thought she had come home. But when I heard an unfamiliar male voice, my suspicion of her cheating grew. I could hear footsteps approaching the bedroom where I was, and my heart raced rapidly. Ah, uh, no! Amanda said that while opening the bedroom door. She hadn't expected me to be there and looked surprised for a moment, but then spoke in a mocking tone. Oh, Michael, why are you here? I wasn't feeling well, so I left work early and went to bed. Weren't you supposed to be at work, Amanda? I took a paid day off and went out. Amanda said that without showing any concern for my health and glanced at the tall man standing behind her with his arm around her shoulder. You went out. I wanted to tell the man not to touch my wife, but I felt nauseous and had a headache, so I could only say that weakly. Well, you already know, right? I'm cheating on you with this guy, and it's all your fault, so I won't apologize. Amanda stood defiantly with her arms crossed and said that to me. I couldn't believe she admitted to cheating so easily, and I was just confused. Stop making that face now. You've ignored me for so long. Scott treats me like a woman, and being with him heals my heart. He's sensitive to current trends since he's a company president, and he's always exciting and fun. I recognized the man's face that Amanda praised. Then it clicked when she mentioned he was a company president. President of XYZ Company? The man standing there was the president of a client company I was working with. He had become famous in the industry after starting his business in his 20s. I had visited his company for business and exchanged business cards with him. Why? I asked Amanda. Like I said earlier, that's why, but I don't mind getting a divorce. Hearing the word divorce, I wanted to stop Amanda, but she tried to leave the room with Scott. Hey, are you okay with this? Just ending your marriage so easily? But Amanda said, It doesn't matter anymore. And tried to take him with her. Well, I'll make sure Amanda's happy. So don't worry. Scott flashed a refreshing smile at me and left the room with Amanda. After that, I got a divorce and received alimony. But I became mentally ill and had to take a leave of absence from work for a while. The reason for Amanda cheating was that I prioritized my job and couldn't spend time with her. Amanda started hanging out at bars alone to kill time, where she met Scott. Amanda had a personality that made it easy to get along with people she just met, so it didn't take long for her to get close to Scott. During my time off work, a colleague I had consulted about the cheating before contacted me and told me that Scott's company, which was a client, had withdrawn from New York due to a headquarters relocation. With this, even if I returned to work, there would be no chance of dealing with Scott's company, and I felt a little relieved. Several years passed since those hellish days, and I managed to recover mentally. By a twist of fate, I met a wonderful woman and decided to remarry. I had changed jobs and moved to a rural area, but it was a more comfortable town, with abundant nature compared to the city. My married life was going well, and I was living a peaceful life. But I ended up getting involved in another incident. On a day off, I was out alone, and a police officer called my name and stopped me. Of course, I had no idea I had done anything wrong. But I had a bad feeling, so I decided to go to the police station. When I arrived at the police station and was taken to a room, there was my ex-wife. Amanda, waiting for me. As soon as Amanda saw my face, she started yelling excitingly. 
Aha, uh -huh, this guy, officer, this guy, he's the stalker. He's been following me around. It's so creepy. Huh? Stalker? What are you talking about? How shameless. There's a limit to how much you can harass someone after breaking up. I couldn't digest what Amanda was saying and the situation, so I asked for an explanation. But Amanda just kept accusing me, and I couldn't see the main point of the story. Then a police officer brought in a man. It was Scott. Hey, I heard from Amanda that you've been quite persistent. It's been years since the divorce. Do you still have feelings for her? I didn't want to hear that from the person who caused the divorce, but I asked the police officer who brought Scott in to explain the situation. It turned out that Amanda had been stalked by someone for a long time, and she had reported me to the police because the stalker's appearance resembled mine. The police investigated and found out that I had recently moved to this town, so they asked me to come in for an interview. I understand the situation, but Amanda, I didn't know you guys were living in this town. Yeah, right. Who would believe a criminal's excuse? I felt anger welling up at Amanda's dismissive words, but the police officer calmed me down. Is there anyone who can prove your innocence? At the police officer's words, I decided to have someone come to the police station. A few minutes later, the person that I chose arrived, and Scott, seeing her face, cried out in astonishment. You, Elizabeth? Hi, big brother. It's been a while. That's right. When I remarried, I married Scott's sister. Scott and Amanda, who didn't know the situation, seemed to be panicking. Actually, Scott's affair with Amanda was discovered by their parents, who cut ties with him. Scott's parents were the presidents of a company that ran several businesses, and knowing that their son had hurt someone, they decided to take care of me. At first, I didn't want to face the family of her lover, but as I got to know them, I felt my heart calming down. After spending time together, I ended up falling in love and marrying Elizabeth, Scott's sister. Are you kidding me? I haven't heard anything about this. Scott yelled at us, but Elizabeth, being used to her brother, argued back. Well, I do have an obligation to inform someone who doesn't even consider us family anymore. Besides, during the time you said Michael's ex-wife was being stalked, he was actually having dinner with me at the hotel's restaurant. You should be able to find our names on the reservation list. And if you ask the sommelier who served us wine, he should be able to confirm it. I was finally cleared of all charges. As we left the police station, grateful to Elizabeth, Amanda and Scott followed us and grabbed Elizabeth's shoulder. Wait a minute. Did you really marry this guy? He failed in the city and ended up in a rural area. You'll regret it if you marry someone like him. That's right, he neglected me a lot when we were married, too. It seems these two will do anything. To ruin our happiness. As Elizabeth shook off the hand on her shoulder, a luxury car pulled up in front of the police station. Seeing the person who got out of the car, Scott exclaimed, Oh, oh, Dad? Scott's father glared at his surprised son and said, I have no reason to be called Dad by you. More importantly, it seems you have been quite rude to my daughter and son-in-law. Well, can't be helped, can it? Are you really okay with Elizabeth marrying this loser? What's with your attitude toward the heir to my company? If anyone's a loser, it's you. Your business only succeeded because of good luck, and you've been acting all high and mighty without even understanding proper management. You have no right to badmouth Michael. Yes, I had moved to this town to study as a successor of my father-in-law's business and had changed jobs to a group company in this town. Defeated, Scott dropped his shoulders, and Amanda desperately tried to talk to him. Hey, what does this mean? You said you'd inherit the company. That's right, Scott's company is doing well, right? If we work hard to grow the company. What? You haven't heard? His company is on the verge of bankruptcy. 
and considering his excessive spending, he's probably in debt too, isn't he? That's... Scott fell silent. Having been hit with the truth by his father, Elizabeth added the final blow. Big brother, you tell Michael's ex-wife that you definitely make her happy. But it seems you're all talk, aren't you? And to believe that, I wonder how much you lack in judgment. And so, the stalking suspicion against my ex-wife was cleared. After that, Scott's company went bankrupt, and Amanda left him at the same time. On the other hand, I've been released from the curse of Amanda and Scott. And I'm living a happy life with Elizabeth.